and uh, welcome to our yearly traditional Blender Network uh, presentation. I think I see more people than, uh, than usual, and uh, that's uh, is very fun. I'm very curious to know why you guys are here. As a matter of fact, uh, our plan is to keep this presentation very short and uh, to ask you a lot of questions, actually, to try to make this uh, as much a, uh, of a discussion as possible. So this is the Blender network. You can actually see it right in front of you. It's a world network of Blender professionals. Our mission is to connect Blender professionals. And uh, as you can see, in Europe, there are a lot of Blender professionals. And you know you can have, uh, there is education, there is uh, companies, there is uh, single freelancers, uh, there is people in every single state in Europe. In average, is uh, many more people in Europe than in the US. That is an uh, uh, interesting uh, fact that we always observe, and uh, also in the other continents. But uh, that's uh, still, it has grown in the past, uh, since the past. Uh, currently, we are uh, around 250, I think, uh, uh, members, which is, uh, which is great. We are really happy with the level and with the quality of the profiles that are there because the whole point of the network is to make sure that it stays and it, it is uh, a list of highly qualified people that are really good at what they do, so that then when uh, we send people to this network, whatever profile they click on, whatever they search for, they will find someone that we trust and uh, someone that knows how Blender works and that knows how to work with it uh, in whatever context for whatever project they might be needed for. So. This year we worked on a few things to improve the website that now uh, Pablo is going to walk you through. But uh, mostly uh, we've been doing our usual work of supporting users, which is we get a lot of uh, incoming requests of support. How does Blender work? How do I render the default cube? And they send these questions to uh, the, the Blender network support. And we answer all of them because it's very important that people who reach out to a Blender and Blender Connected organization, they get an answer. And sometimes the answer that I would like to send is something else than what we actually send, but <laughs> <laughs> we actually send very helpful answers. <laughs> okay, uh, anyway, I will give it to Pablo so he's going to talk more about what we did for our users and for people who browse the website. Hello there. So uh, the main thing that that we worked on this this year uh, as a, on a technical level was that we we had last year when we this this talk we had uh, I think way less than we were more around the 200 uh, profiles and then we we noticed uh, uh, like a, when people were browsing the website they were, they were, it's a bit slow like you could see a little bit of the profile but you couldn't really see um, um, like uh, the, the skills or the or the gallery I quickly see the gallery of the people. Um, big part of the, the Blender network is artists, and they have really cool pictures. So we wanted to show that. So what we did is a uh, first flow-based uh, search and listing that we first implemented on the jobs list. That is our, that's a, the most visited website part of the website is the jobs board. So we applied it here as well. So what you see is basically the the same um, kind of filtering that we had before. Now you can also filter by uh, certified trainers. So if you go to the bottom, you can uh, choose if you are a uh, certified trainer, and you can also um, limit by um, uh, the, the skills they have and the, the, uh, um, if they work online. That's also very important. There's a lot of people that apply to the network and say, but I'm not really looking for work. Should I be on the Blender network? And yes, the answer is yes. You can just say that you're not available for work right now, but um, it's important that you're, you're face is out there, especially if you're academic, if you're doing uh, training and you're working in a university or, or uh, research, for example, that's very important. So, what? I know that guy, yes. Um, so what we did is like, what is, well, internet is terrible here, but uh, basically it's a way that you can um, pre preview, yeah, you can vi not visit the profile, but just preview. Um, if you can keep clicking, you can just Keep loading a little bit of the the what what the what this uh, profile is about, without actually going to visit the whole profile, and then you can visit. Oh, nice! Oh. Coming on, this is twice. I like it so much that I I I, I put it twice. Um, 
but uh, then you can hold, uh, visit the whole profile, of course. And with this uh, thing in mind, this flow-based um, um, listing, we also applied it to jobs search. Talk about it. All right, so, <laughs> Faith talking. The jobs list this year, uh, la last year we was around the same, but this year we've seen a growth on full-time jobs offers. People are looking for full-time blender um, everything, the, from artists to uh, <coughs> generalists to um, animators as well. So the full-time, as you can see here, these are all recent. There's like October, September, September, August, they're all full-time um, works, uh, jobs, applications for. Uh, there's one in, in Russia, there was a, like a, the planetarium was, was looking, that's super cool. I, I really wish I was either Russian or <laughs> close by because working on a planetarium doing like space stuff with Blender, that's going to be pretty cool, uh, full-time even. So um, that is really exciting. This is something uh, we, uh, we, we didn't see a lot in the past and now we see it. And it's great. So the, the technical side is similar. The, the browsing is so similar to what we, I was explaining on the, on the professionals page. But basically, you can, you can go and click back, click back, click back on all the job applications that you have here. And the, maybe we can show the list of the slash BFCT. Oh, yeah, sure. That has a special extra filter for um, pre, for continent. So the way you can see the trainers, um, when, when I came to Europe, it was uh, the, the first time. It, it surprised me how close everything is. You just fly a couple hours. and uh, So having this is very important. If you can f get trainers from, uh, from within a few hours from where you live. So there is 28, currently 28, uh, Blender Foundation certified trainers in Europe. And we need to keep working on bringing more people to Africa and South America. Okay, so at this point, we need to move to the actual okay. let's talk about the real deal. So <clears throat> here it is. So our system for joining the Blender network has been the same since we took over it a few years ago. And we have these three different memberships that everybody pretty much knows of. And uh, we think that this is still a fair rate for people to join. The academic uh, uh, process is a bit more elaborate than simply just clicking to join. There is a more in-depth review, so we really make sure that people who apply for academic have an academic background, they work with teaching, or they do research. There's really legit academic people. And um, in the other cases, of course, also we check that people are actual professionals. But the main point is uh, we have been thinking of ways to improve this, how to make the network uh, more inclusive, how to reach out to more users. and. Uh, while this system is uh, good for classifying people, maybe it's not the best way. So we are thinking of alternatives, because sometimes people are uh, freelancers, but sometimes people, they just uh, uh, are working on something on the, on, for a company, but they still want to be on the network, because maybe they want to be a speaker at a conference one day, or they want to share their professional work somehow. Uh, but, uh, if, but right now, they don't have the chance. And we've been through a uh, few brainstorms thinking of ways to make this better. And uh, it very quickly tends to become something like, ah, let's make the network fee for everyone to join. Everyone can get a profile, and then you can just be there. If you want to be really a professional, you can be up there. And uh, it sounds very exciting. It's like you build your own Blender Facebook. But uh, in the end, is this really what we want to do? Because the mission and what the Blender network is, is the biggest network of Blender professionals. So the people who join should be professional, should have a professional mission. And so how do we make this work? And we don't know yet. We've been, we are working on it, we are thinking about it, but we want to take the chance that there is a room full of people here to actually ask why you are not on the Blender network. The first pool. <laughs> the network. Yes, okay, that's right. Who is on the Blender network right now? And now, all of you other guys and girls, why are you <laughs> No, okay, so uh, as you can see, like, this, not everybody is there. And uh, we would really like to know the reasons and to uh, understand that. And also, we are super happy to hear feedback from you about it. So if you have uh, any comment, uh, don't be shy. We uh, would love to hear from you. So let's get started. 
Uh, I'm just not good enough in the program. I'm very good for making stories, uh, uh, designing things, uh, uh, the, and um, um, designing puppets, designing animals, w whatever you want. But I'm not very good at the program itself. That's why I'm here, to connect with people who are better at the program than I am, but maybe less in making stories. That is actually a great point, because yeah, lots of people, yeah, okay. I will, let's, let's let people talk, I stop talking. <laughs> I have two, two thoughts about the Blender Network, because being there already for a few years is just like having something like business card. I'm plugged in the network, I have my small portfolio there, I'm there, but there is after those first steps, no, not much there. So maybe there will be needed some kind of further structure, for example, for joining to different parties, not only by simple relation, I'm working with him, but also we can collaborate on higher level. That's the one <coughs> thought, and another one, no, thank you for that. <laughs> Another one is maybe we should have there something like tags or badges and this will allow you, allow you to just create something like not only three types of account but also mixed accounts. Maybe somebody is on academic level like I for example, I'm working for the university and I would like to have some kind of academic account there but I'm also another one, I'm a fri freelancer there so these two I don't know if they could exist, both of them. If you take some, something like tags, it could work this way, okay? So that's two, four, two cents for me. Okay, thank you. Here. Um, I am working with Blender full-time in a game studio, in, but I don't really see any, because I don't, I don't really have time to work. Uh, I don't see the benefit of joining the the uh, network, uh, just b why I'm here. That why if I'm uh, like join for fifty bucks a year, it's not a lot, but I don't see a reason to be there if I'm like busy with work, even when I'm pro a professional. Mm, yeah, that's a very valid point. We've seen that in the past. Uh, if I'm not looking for work, why would I want to be there? Why would I want to show uh, or show it off there? There is. Uh, in this case, for example, you're at the, at the Blender conference. You are here to learn. You're also for networking, maybe. You're, you want to see people that are working on the, same, uh, on the same topic or in the same area or in the same uh, things that you're doing, right? Well, the Blender network is like the online version of that. So you're not looking for work. You're not available to travel. There's like options there that you can, you can enable. And we, can, we want to make this a bit maybe more, more clear. Maybe just hide the option completely, or maybe just have a different listing. But the fact that you are doing something with Blender, um, even though you're not looking for work or anything, it's awesome to have it out there. And it's great to have it here at the Blender conference, and other people can see it. Maybe you can give a talk about it, or lightning talk. But having an online place where you can actually point people, and one day we we can build these sort of groups that connect people that they are not looking for work, but they connect them right there. That they, they can share. I mean, their research they're doing or um, documentation that they're working on. So it does. You know, it's not really just for like looking for work or applying for work, but just get people together and get 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 them out there that they are doing awesome stuff with Blender. There's someone in the back, someone over there. So. Thanks. Have you guys ever thought about having some kind of a, like an enthusiast level, like between academic and professional, and maybe even have some kind of a credit system for support where they buy credits to get extra support? Well, this kind of uh, can turn a little bit the network itself into uh, what already is becoming, which is a bit of a support platform for uh, for anyone that is using Blender. So finding a way for people to be there, it's it's important, and that's one of the things I was mentioning earlier. Like, not everybody fits those categories. So yeah, we've been thinking about it, but we don't know yet how to make it work. So it's a, it's a good point, though. Okay, next. 
Thank you. Uh, you actually already re uh, re um, replied uh, to this uh, by your mail, but since I'm here, I'm going to tell it. Um, so me, I recently uh, subscribed to the network, but it took me, it took me some time because uh, what um, what bugged me it's, it was the fact that I had to pay for it, and um, also. Uh, uh, what I really like about this website is the map because um, in my area there are really not many uh, professionals uh, and uh, I think also it would be, I agree with uh, P Piotr, Piotr that it would be cool to have a free uh, account uh, maybe uh, not professional account but it could also be uh, ignored in a research, like when you're hiring, you, you're looking for only professionals, you can uh, uncheck the box for uh, enthusiasts, for example, and uh, this, this would maybe bring more people uh, so that we would have a bigger map and uh, so that professionals can also make connections with non-professionals, but it's still useful to build your network this way. Okay. That is actually we, we have that in mind, right? Yes, yes. Like that's uh, indeed we we discussed this previously, so it's a good point. I don't know overall how you how you guys feel about it, and uh, if there are. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Now, what I was thinking, like as, as was mentioned as well, having some sort of um, basic account where people can't necessarily apply for a job, um, where they can just showcase their work. But maybe that could work uh, with like a one-time donation just to be part of the network so you guys still get some funding out of it. Um, because I do think for people that want to join but just kind of want to look around a bit, I think 50 euros is a lot more than, um, yeah, I mean, I'll put it this way. There's a lot of websites out there that like you showcase your work for free, yeah. obviously. Um, so maybe that's an idea, just to have like a separate tab that doesn't show up when people are looking for professionals so you don't show up in that list because you're not necessarily available for work. So. Yeah, that's similar to what he was saying. That having a part of the, uh, being part of the network and showing it on a map, even though they are not professional, you can highlight the profession, highlight the professionals differently. But that's something we 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 had in mind, and we put a lot of um, thought into it, and it might become a, a reality because it happened in the past. That there is these websites like meetups dot something that is, is for meetups, right? That you put there your email and they put advertisement and stuff and then you, 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 get that, you get the meetings there set up. Uh, and that's great. We also have an events part of the, of the network where we, we, it's more, of course, Blender focused. But having a place that maybe is just not for professionals but enthusiasts and have, want to get together and want to see people around them, that thing is that's pretty, pretty important. There are websites where people, there is a, the, how is it called, the, the website that where you can see in a Google map, everybody, like the, the Blender users, there was in Blender Artists, there was a thread about it. <laughs> Blender World User Map, yeah, something like that. I remember like, like 10 years ago, I used, added myself there in the south of South Argentina. And that was pretty exciting because then you could see people, even though I was 15 years old and I wasn't really, um, like a, I wasn't 15 in 10 years ago. Oh, it's a bit more ago, <coughs> but <coughs> all right. But it was pretty exciting for me to see my little bubble there as a Blender user and see other people that actually were in, in the area using Blender. So I think that that is something that maybe that it fits completely here. It's not part of the, the professionals. Uh, the people are actually making a living with Blender, but it's important for, uh, for networking because one day these people are going to start making a living with Blender and then um, they, yeah, they become professionals. Yeah, that's what I meant with the single small donation. Because that really, I'll put it this way, um, like the single donation could keep it from turning into Facebook, basically. You know, as much as everybody uses Facebook or whatever, it's not a great website for that kind of stuff, for professional stuff. I think LinkedIn has sort of turned into Facebook as well a little bit. Um, so I think it might sort of be a good little gate to, uh, to keep the people out that don't necessarily have the best intentions or aren't really that into it in the first place. So. Yes. I mean, the, um, we, we really 
we, we will look at this like we have to seriously think about it and how to make it uh, how to make it how to change it maybe maybe we really it changes a little bit the meaning and uh, in the past, we, you know, we've been thinking, ah, oh, what if the uh, join in the network was for free? But then you still have a selection process. Like, uh, would that help? And uh, things like that. So we we want to keep the website fresh and working and uh, offering a platform for people to meet. Uh, that That's important. But one thing that... that uh, that is a big, a big problem for us. Is uh, how f because we can push the website, you know, like we we can, we can make it larger and we can make it more inclusive and get a whole Blender community there. But is that really what our mission is? Like, uh, it, does it mean connecting Blender professional, connecting Blender uh, users with each other, or we should also just try to reach out and connect them with the rest of the world too? Because Blender is growing, and that's what is important. Like, do we want the Blender network to be a place for people that come from the outside that are looking for Blender expertise, Blender? TDs, Blender trainers, because they're switching to Blender. Like we get so many emails, so many support requests from big studios that actually want to switch to Blender, and they don't know how. How do I do it? Which you know, they they subscribe to training websites because that's the best kind of training they can find. But you know, if you get an in-house trainer in one week of in-house training, you can probably get a lot out of that than subscribing to a website, for example. And uh, so, if we want to be ready for that, then uh, that's a, a different dynamic. So. This is also something that I think is very important for the future of the network that we keep in mind and that we are actively doing right now and that is really invisible because everybody here knows each other. Here at the Blender conference, everybody is, is Blender, Blender focused and is good. And Blender is becoming bigger and bigger every day, not just because of this, but because people from the outside see us for, what, for the, the community that we are and for what Blender can achieve. And more people join and more people talk to each other. And that's the, that's the most important part, I think. So, yeah. Um, well, just to close that, that topic, I think the donation could help in a way, but it would still not prevent from having, for fast, unless you limit it in a way, you just allow, I don't know, name and location, which is what the, the, the world map thingy um, used to have. I think that maybe that, that is a, yeah, maybe that's a good way to go, and then the professionals could pay uh, at the, the bit extra for having their own gallery and everything in there uh, on, on their, on the actual professions listing. But yeah, maybe that could be one way to go because as Francesco was saying, it's not only a selection, but also a rejection <laughs> a process that we go through. Like every week we get plenty of, of submissions and we have to go through all of them, sometimes translate whatever they're writing um, and see if they're legit, see if, okay, their website, they're, if, if they're active on social media, like, like everybody that is on the on the network is actually we, we go through the the process of seeing their work, asking them again. Maybe they they submitted I don't know ten pictures and eight of them were maybe not as good. So okay, remove those eight, leave the best ones, and just like there is a selection process that goes through it. So if if you open that for everybody, then it will be just way too much work for the Blender Foundation and Blender Institute to take care of. So maybe just allowing. Uh, yeah, maybe then the name and the location, maybe that's one way of, of and maybe a, like a tagline or something that would be a good way of including those people. And then giving that extra for the people that want to be more visible. Luciano. Okay, so um, um, it's this is not a question, it's kind of like an idea. Uh, maybe the website in some way should be more focused on the artist's work so have kind of like a common gallery that is, uh, I don't know, with votes from other artists. Because um, what I f feel about it is like it's a little bit disconnected from the, out the outside world. Like if you go to ArtStation, all you see is like fantastic work from the artists that are there. And then you can contact them or see more work from them. And here you start like, okay, technical part, right? But then if you uh, encounter a website that has work doesn't matter who is it it is it from, then you can get in and then be more interested in hiring these people. But you go through the process the the, the other way around here, right? So you need to know what you're looking for and then you start looking for profiles. And if you showcase more work, maybe this will connect more Blender artists to more work. Because I think one of the reasons that people are not getting to the Blender network is because even though it's cool and it's growing it's still not attracting much employers or much more people to be interested in. Like I've been in the network for three years, I think, 
And I see like every, every single time that there's a new job, I go inside and, and look for it. But we still get like one or two postings or maybe more a month, but still not enough to keep it flowing and to be, and to say like, okay, uh, this is really, really worth paying because I don't care paying 50 euros a year if I'm getting like one job a month from it, right? But when, when it's not really working that way that much, I think it needs to get more exposed <coughs> and bring people because uh, it's good that uh, there's professionals there, uh, only professional work, but it needs to connect with the outside world, the ones that demands this professional work. So, yeah. Yeah, I think we, we had that in mind once uh, to, to make a special, like a wall. Right now on the front page of the, of the network, you have a, um, a feature profile that sort of it, it kind of has that idea, but maybe the, the whole world could have uh, a grid of pictures like ArtStation that you were saying. But that will have to be curated manually, I guess. Have to be like go through every picture and then just like say, okay, this picture is cool, this one, that one, that one, and then just build a wall. But that would be curated by other artists in the network? Yeah, yeah, it could be curated by the other people just by, by making them. But how do you prevent people from, you know, like fraud? Like, so there, there has to be some work done there. But yeah, it's a, it's a, I think it's a valid point. There is also, why well, we, we shouldn't forget about academics and, and developers. Developers, there are developers here. Here, I see a developer that's on the network. So uh, I think we, we should also, or maybe they could post good pictures about their, their work. <laughs> um, but yeah, we should try to include everybody. Uh, it's, an, uh, it's a good idea. Okay, well, our time is, uh, is up, unfortunately. I thank you very much for joining us. And uh, if you have any question, we are going to be around. We are around in the open studio on Monday. So if you want to give us more suggestions, if you want to talk, if you want to be in the Blender Network, please just talk to us any moment. We are super happy to hear from you. Thank you very much. Thank you.